Hi, a very good morning to all of you. A uh, warm welcome to this uh, session, which is a webinar on uh, case studies for patent digit examination 2024. Uh, as we are aware that uh, we are uh, headed for the exam in a week's time and uh, uh, the patent digit examination 2024 that's scheduled on uh, 7th of January. Uh, I'm sure you have already got your hall tickets downloaded and you have uh, like, you know, uh, prepared yourself for the upcoming exam uh, in terms of your preparation, as well as if you're traveling from outside, uh, then your arrangements for the respective locations for the patent agent exam as such. Uh, I'm here today for uh, conducting a live session for some of the case studies for the patent agent examination. <clears throat> when I say case studies, it is not just about uh, the uh, case studies of, uh, 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 I would say, uh, the hypothetical case studies of paper two, part one, but rather the case studies I am going to discuss, which are relevant with respect to certain topics, as well as uh, based on my analysis, these are important cases because they have been asked in the exam, as well as uh, many a times there have been hypothetical questions in uh, paper two part one, what we call it as, uh, I would say, the, uh, the uh, analytical reasoning type questions actually. Like, you know, uh, so firstly, uh, thanks for joining on Sunday morning as well. Uh, when I opened uh, uh, the registrations for this particular webinar, I had asked for specific questions if you have. And before I actually move ahead for the uh, actual session, I would like to take some of these questions actually, which are asked to me uh, to be covered in this particular session. Uh, they are beyond the case studies. As we are awaiting some more students to join, in the meantime, we'll cover these questions and thereafter we'll move ahead with the six case studies uh, which are which are important from the exam perspective as well as they have been asked either in the previous exams or they are significant in terms of uh, the understanding of the concept or the domain. Now, one question that has been asked to me is which are the required sections for answering case studies for people? People one or two. So basically, uh, uh, it would all depend on what is that, uh, I would say, uh, what is that uh, question that is asked or what is the case study that is being asked actually, uh, depending on that, you should be aware of the particular section. In fact, what I have done is those six case studies that we are discussing for that, I have included the relevant section numbers as such. Okay. So depending on that and paper two, part one, wherever applicable, you have to put few things like the section number, the form number, the rule number and the fees wherever applicable. Then there is a question which is asked to me is about new amendment in patent rules. I wanted to inform each one of you again that the 2023 amendment rules are not yet notified. That means that means the rules are not yet implemented. They are in the draft stage yet. It is not uh, uh, as such amplified. Then a question is how to write answers to questions in paper too. Now, paper two, part one, as I said, a more analytical uh, reasoning type of questions, or I would say uh, more uh, questions uh, which are uh, which are uh, like you know hypothetical case studies type of questions. Pe, wherever there is an advice required, put it in the put it in the form of a, of a letter that I have been discussing again and again in my classes or previous sessions as well. Beyond that. For the draft part, definitely you are supposed to answer in a specific format, the format that has been given to all of you, as well as the format that has been discussed in all the classes actually, 
or the sessions. It has to come into form two format only. Now that's how you have to be it only for title abstract claims or be it only for the full specification. You have to get the it in the same format as such. Now, how relevant are the rule numbers and form numbers or how important they are while writing the answers? To this, my uh, strategy as I have discussed it uh, in the class as well as uh, like, you know, in some of the previous live sessions as well, is that the rule numbers, form numbers, section numbers are important. But if you know the correct answers, then only put it. If you don't know the answers, do not, do not put wrong answers therein. If there is a specific mention of putting the rule number, uh, form number, section number, definitely there will be marks associated with that for sure. Next question is about design act. Uh, let me tell you, there was some confusion and 2023 uh, amendment rules make it mandatory for a uh, patent agent exam to have understanding of the design act but then as these rules as these rules are not uh, yet uh, i would say implemented that is that is the reason i would say that uh, like you know uh, you may not have the designs act as a part of it as such so you don't need to worry about the design act next question is other than other than patent act what are the other fields from where questions can come this is an interesting question and i'll take this along with uh, the other question which is asked live chat in live chat uh, amendment this is by balvinder singh amendment relating to janavishwas act and biodiversity act pertaining to patents will be coming in the exam or not yes they are part of it as such now the changes that have been done through janavishwas act are for the patent act that is the reason it is very essential to uh, read them or to know them as such and other than patent act, you may have questions from the PCT, the Convention, Paris Convention Treaty. Uh, you can also have some questions from uh, the Biological Biodiversity Act as such, Biological Diversity Act uh, about Nas National Biodiversity Authority, NBA related. You can also have certain questions from the depository bodies as well so these are some of the acts wherein uh, outside the patent act jiske questions aapko puche ja sakte hai. but again the numbers may be really very less as such then uh, how to draft patent in an effective way uh, this is one question asked to me and beyond that there was uh, I'll club this with how to get maximum marks in paper too. And uh, uh, like, you know, any uh, uh, anything I would call uh, is how to write when you don't know the answer. And would there be any marks actually for that as such? Now, for that, uh, I, would, I would put it in a simple way that it has to go in a patent draft format. Your answer should go in a draft format. The technical things are absolutely fine, but all the basic fundamental rules, as I have been repeating this, stick to the basics. Stick to the basics, right? All the fundamental rules are to be applied actually for the uh, drafting purpose as such. And those rules uh, which are given in the rule book or manual all those rules would be definitely applicable here. Next one. How to draft patent in effective way? Now, uh, see, patent drafting is an art to put the science in a legal manner. Now, this has been a, a statement which I've been repeating many a times. 
Now you need to understand the invention first. And when we did this exercise of full patent specification drafting two times, and the third one is ongoing, that point of time, it is also essential to understand the time limit given. The time limit required basically in terms of three things. How much time do you require to read the invention? How much time do you require to digest the invention? How much time do you require to write? All these three things are, uh, uh, I would say, uh, important as such uh, as far as the uh, dra patent drafting is uh, uh, concerned as such. Then there is uh, one question, how to answer the situation-based question in paper two. For this, definitely the answer is that, uh, Again, uh, form section rule numbers and in, in few cases, case studies, if you know, put it correctly, actually, like, you know, and then that is, that is something. Uh, and if you are asked for an advice, try to put it in a letter format as well. That would give you some crucial marks in paper. Too. Then length for answers for five marks at 10 marks. Now, this is tricky, honestly speaking, uh, because I believe that it should be the content and not the length of the answer, which should give you a mark. But then if you still have to put, I would put for five marks question, approximately one page. And for 10 marks question, approximately two page answer should be something which should be sufficient as such. Are international judgments important for the exam? Uh, I think, no, uh, the international judgments, uh, like, you know, uh, may not be per se that much relevant, except anything related to, uh, uh, except anything, uh, uh, related to actually, I would say, uh, which is, uh, uh, PCT actually. So international judgments are important, not that significantly important. But then, uh, but then what is important is that uh, the other acts, like, as I said, the PCT, the, the only PCT and convention related things, okay? Uh, uh, please give an idea about important topics to be recalled before a day of examination. Uh, this has been very, I would say, a difficult question to answer. Honestly, uh, like, you, if you look at the patent agent exam pattern, uh, like, you know, every year we have got the difficulty level that is getting uh, increased, basically. It is more becoming practice-oriented, practical-oriented as such. So, uh, as far as the important topics are concerned, had it been 10 years back, I would have said pre-grant, post-grant opposition, compulsory licensing kind of stuff. But then nowadays, if you see, uh, like, you know, the traditional important topics are, like, you know, comparatively lesser important. But then if you ask me today as well, and I think I discussed this in uh, one of the sessions yesterday with my class, uh, definitely Section 3 is something which is too significant in terms of understanding, uh, in terms of putting it, uh, like, you know, because in, I, I think it was in 2016 that, we had 30 marks, yes, total 30 marks only on section three. Again, it's not about the topic. It's about the understanding of the topic that is uh, important as. I've got a question here. What is the deadline for filing international application, convention and PCT? That's asked by Dr. Prabhagaran and uh, Pranali. Yes, Pranali, thank you so much for answering this. 12 months from the priority for entering in PCT or convention as such. That's the uh, right uh, answer to this. Uh, Bhakti is asking uh, via uh, YouTube chat, do we need to go through latest patent case studies? I think uh, that is not, uh, honestly speaking, how are you going to decide which case studies? Because day in, day out, there have been so many things happening simultaneously, be it at the, at the patent office, be it at the courts, be it at the administrative level. So it is very difficult to answer. So uh, the volume would be so high. So if you compare it, I would say is in terms of the, the uh, efforts 
versus the output efforts would be more output would be less so i would uh, like to tell this bhakti that stick to few case studies probably that uh, we would be uh, we would be putting uh, today in the five six case studies and i believe that should be uh, uh, sufficient yes but bhakti your question holds really true for the viva because in viva most of the times we have questions which are asked from the we have questions which are asked from the latest case studies or administrative things as well that are happening at the uh, patent office at the uh, dpiit or the ministry of commerce and industries level or anything that is happening under the government of india level as such i've got a question from gayatri here question related to amendments according to yes uh, there is a uh, possibility so you can't deny that gayatri i have already covered that uh, to answer a question uh for, for how will we write one page answer for this question okay uh, mitali uh, how to answer whether music uh, like you know uh, therapy is uh, patentable or not i would i would uh, like to mention here in few things uh, that uh, you have to mention the sub section subsection there uh, you can also mention that uh, under this specific section this is not patentable thereafter you can also mention that it may be protected under some other kind of uh, ip right as such that may be also one way to that may be also one way to look at it as such right so uh, you can make it as a kind of a story mention the section subsection as well as uh, i would say some things which are relevant for you uh, for so like you know you will have to as i said it's not necessary that full one page actually mere liye if you ask me then your answer should be correct rather than the number of pages but then if we have to do it then you can make it like thoda sa uh, like you know make it a bit uh, broader enough uh, i would say uh, uh, that's how i would uh, actually uh, put it then uh, recent amendment in patent rules definitely not the 23 rules as such they are not yet uh, uh applicable uh, basically they are just in the draft stage any new schemes or amendment related to act and rules uh okay and now uh, maybe anything new in last few years four five years that may be something uh, that have been uh, that are important i would say is sipp scheme has been asked again and again uh then you have got this expedited uh ex expedited examination as such which has been asked uh, again and again as such then that is that is something uh, which is uh, important a uh, question will be asked about the, the designs act no i have been saying this again and again uh, how to answer hypothetical cases while drafting complete specification answer this how to retain the most information short at piece period of time or time management during uh, the uh, i would say answering the questions plus you can go through one of my live sessions which is available on youtube farmer letter youtube channel jahan pe definitely you can come to know about you can come to know about i would say uh, a specific session on time management okay uh, uh, time management as such uh, that time management is something then entire uh, session as such which is uh, like you know uh, the time management uh, for the paper 2 specifically because paper 1 which is for 2 hours wherein you have enough uh, i would say uh, you would have enough of uh, time basically for uh, the multiple choice questions that's not a concern the time management for paper 2 how to go for that paper 2 answering the paper to is something which is important and i have an entire session on that you can go through farmali tati youtube channel under the live section there is a specific specific uh, i would say uh, 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 specific uh, uh, session i had conducted in 22 okay how to remember the different sections of patent uh, now this question is pretty interesting uh, now the way i have told my students or this is applicable to every one of you <coughs> don't try to remember all the sections go with the important ones firstly 
and try to keep remember three things one is chapter number like for example chapter 2 inventions not patentable section 3 to 4 that's how you can actually put it and that way you would be in the position to understand now patent filing procedures and post dating anti dating biological inventions how can we challenge controller decisions and period a difference between form 6 13 10 patent tradition i think uh, these are more technical topics uh, uh, that i would say are uh, uh, covered by in some of the sessions i'm i won't be covering uh, everything uh, right here i got a question here from pranali uh, give example of applicability of section 3k now when we think of section 3k applicability anything that that forms uh, i would say uh, a basis of any software related in uh, like you know uh, inventions or algorithm or for example many times a lot of startups come to us who say that they have got a new idea for business and for that they have got the website or a, a e-commerce platform pranali which is one of the most common things that we face as a practitioner e-commerce platform banaya for the first time let us say we have got a e-commerce platform for the the let's say the gi uh, tagged materials also so would it be would it be uh, patentable that kind of question can be asked therein the answer is definitely no because it's more of a software more of an idea business idea it is more of a uh, i would say business method or a comp or an algorithm basically so algorithm as in coding so that is not patentable as such now uh purva is asking will there be questions related to ip awareness or facilitator i believe uh, purva these kind of questions are asked in viva more rather than uh, rather than uh, i would say uh, uh i would say the actual exam per se uh, the the uh, फैसिलिटेटर एस आई पी पी फैसिलिटेटर स्कीम के लिए क्वेश्चन पूछे गए हैं दैट इज पॉसिबल बट देन फॉर आई पी अवेयरनेस जो निपम का प्रोग्राम है एंड ऑल दे मे बी लाइक यू नो पार्ट ऑफ द आई वुड से मोर ऑफ द वाई वा रादर दैन द दिस पर्टिकुलर आई वुड सेशन द दिस पर्टिकुलर Uh, exam as such viva me puche jayenge and not paper 1 or paper 2 as such asgar ali there is no feedback form this is live session for students who are preparing for patentation uh, if i am not going to give any a uh, feedback link per se anyway now uh i have also got a question uh computer related inventions can you please give brief description about CRI CRI guidelines है uh, बलविंदर जी you can go through that actually once it would give you uh, some insights about how the inventions are I would say the uh, how the inventions are basically prosecuted at such so that would give that would give some kind of idea about uh, I would say the uh, 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 providing the details actually uh, about the CRI inventions basically right now. let me move on to actual session i'm done with most of the questions that were asked to me through the google form uh, for uh, when when it was uh, for the uh, submission for the or attending this particular session let me go through the actual session for the day and uh, let me open share my screen with the case studies yep first important so the there is no legal advice provided uh i'm a lawyer not an advocate i'm not practicing there is no legal advice provided the case studies that i am discussing here are purely for educational purpose or purely for the purpose of i would say the uh understanding only uh, for the patent agent examination and not there is no Uh, legal advice provided uh, now what cases i am going to discuss is first important case that i am going to discuss is and section 106 and 108 uh, 
Bajaj Auto versus TVS Motor Company Limited. This is a case of an infringement case, which was, which is considered as a high profile case, actually, which unfortunately ended up in, ended up in, uh, I would say, the out of court settlement rather than the uh, decision coming for that as such. This case, why it is important? This case is important uh, uh, because, because uh, this, uh, as I said, firstly, it's a high profile case. Secondly, there were also uh, these understanding of 106 and 108. It's something which would be uh, very easily, we can understand it as per this particular uh, case study. As such. The next one is, uh, of course, Section 16 related, and this is a new case. This has happened this year. Syngenta versus uh, Syngenta versus uh, controller of patents as such. Now, this is for the divisional application. There was an interesting case of Boringer versus uh, the controller of patents, uh, which was large, like you know, very widely discussed. Syngenta this year, 2023. Uh, actually uh, kind of overcame that particular, like, you know, uh, so the decision of uh, 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 Boringer was set aside and new standard for the divisional was set in this particular case. And this is a important case, both from the perspective of understanding as well as, as well as I would say, both from the perspective of understanding as well as the case studies in the VIVA as well as paper one or two Paper 2, Part 1, jo hai, usme bhi similar case study aapko aa sakta hai. Definitely Section 3D, you, there is no challenge on this. Novartis versus Union of India will be discussing this in brief because it's discussed so many times in the class, outside the class, in live sessions as well. Next one is compulsory licensing, so roughly by Natco. This also we, I'll be discussing in brief. Then there is another sec, uh, important case which is about Section 21, which is about the appeals procedures it is also about it is also about the understanding of section 21 the controllers or the patent office rights as well as the different terminologies that are used and the case is ericsson versus union of india which happened almost 14 or 15 years back section 8 and the standard gold standard that is considered in section 8 beat at the patent office beat at the courts beat at the uh, the uh, any uh, teachings or any classes or uh, any course as well and the famous cases came to versus union of India. I'm just going to discuss these six cases. Why these six cases? Because these are important. The topics are important as well as as well as this is something which has been. Okay, what kind of questions are asked in case studies? Firstly, case studies ke upar, there was only one question directly asked and which was for Section 3D, uh, Novartis versus Union of India. It was a full long answer question for 10 marks long back. Beyond that, there are no specific questions on case studies. In I think 22 or 23, there was one multiple choice question which was match the pairs, but nothing beyond that as such which can be specifically asked for the case study. Why are we studying these case studies then? One of the intents of studying these case studies is that generally what is observed is paper two, part one, the analytical reasoning or hypothetical cases that we have there, those cases are more or less based on some of the cases that have happened live in the, I would say, live in the, uh, 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 like, you know, either in the court or, I mean, Jo hua hai usse related hypothetically the cases are created and asked in the patent agent examination. Let me start with the first one, Bajaj Auto versus TVS Motor Limited. Now, uh, interesting fact is here in the patent number 195904, Bajaj uh, had uh, uh, patented their DTSI technology in this particular patent. The uh, 125 cc flame engine and uh, TVS was using CCVTI technology again in the 125 uh, cc flame engine and Bajaj was that uh, Bajaj claimed that uh, 
with the exception of one particular component only, it was more or less the same technology and the uh, the the case was filed for infringement for this particular, uh, uh, I would say, uh, in this particular case. Also. Now, uh, TVS uh, claimed that the technology used in this case was prior art since it was uh, uh, disclosed already used uh, in a, a US car uh, patent by Honda and the patent could not have been granted actually to Bajaj in the first place. TVS Motor also filed a counterclaim alleging groundless threats of infringement. So, the first case hai injunction ka, that is 108, section 108, which is for the, for the uh, uh, I would say the injunction. Counterclaim uh, TVS Motor filed is groundless threat of infringement, which, which is section 106. What we call also uh, uh, like you know as a uh, as a uh, something which is more of a aggressive strategy for D TVS to file that asset. The Madras High Court, the case went to Madras High Court, provided injunction restraining restraining uh, any infringement and uh, the launch of TVS flame was stalled. This this happened long back. Now, TVS pleaded for vacating this injunction order and the division bench of the High Court agreed and vacated the order. That means the case went to the division bench of the High Court and that case was vacated. Or the, so the injunction which was given against TVS for Bajaj Ka patent was, was that injunction was vacated as such. And it was provided that TVS Motors can launch their product. Now, Bajaj appealed to Supreme Court against the order of the division bench of Madras High Court. Supreme Court, when the case went, firstly, the court criticized the pendency of matter. 2009 ka case, ye, at the end, it was settled in 2019. Okay. Now, Supreme Court criticized the pendency of matters in regarding to IPR. It stated that the permanent injunction was pending. <laughs> Hence, uh, directed the sole judge to decide the same as such. And TVS Motors was allowed to sell it by provided that they keep a proper track record of all sales in India and export. A receiver was appointed to maintain the book of profit. This is, this is to evaluate the damages basis. The case didn't move ahead basically because it was settled in 2019 and it is said that the technology technology became absolute in 2019 because next year se unko naya norm a gaya tha and this technology was kind of not that much useful as such. That's the reason. Not only in India but outside India as well I think there were a couple of other cases which were filed by uh, uh, TVS and Bajaj against each other, they were all settled out of the court, but the, this, there was no decision that came. Herein, this is, in fact, the question that was asked about this case, which was match the pairs, this case is related to infringement, patent infringement as a matter. There was also one case which was about Merck versus Glenmark Pharmaceuticals for the drug cetagliptin. Again, it was for infringement and the injunction as such. If you are interested, you can go through that particular case as well. Next case that we are going to discuss is, this is for Syngenta versus controller of patent. This is for divisional application. This is for section 16, section 16 of Indian Patent Act. Syngenta had filed an application in 2005 and a divisional in September 2011, actually. Now, the controller refused the divisional, stating that, stating that for an application to be considered as a divisional under Section 16, it is essential that the parent include multiple invention and not just the same invention. It relied upon an interesting case of 2022, which is Boringer case. And in this case, the verdict of High Court was very clear. If you have to file a divisional, 
you need to have multiple inventions in the main invention but those need to be claimed only to so parent application mein jo claims hai on the basis of that only you can file a divisional appeal that was the decision given by boring kavats now in this case in this case in syngenta's divisional application it was rejected purely based on that because this was the order passed in boringer's case in 2020 the divisional was rejected since the parent it included in the specification but did not claim plurality of inventions and there was no objection or no such objection in fer related to unity of invention or divisional patent application as such this was the reason this case controller refused in the first place so which case syngenta ka second application was refused based on a boringer decision the boringer decision itself was contentious because in boringer decision it was mentioned that in boringer decision it was mentioned that unless your main invention parent invention has multiple inventions that to in claims you cannot file a divisional application now the syngenta case uh syngent appeal to high court the appellant filed an appeal before the delhi high court uh, under section 117a which is appealable for the controller's decisions as such the single judge expressed disagreement with the view expressed in bi case the boringal in angelm case which suggested that which suggested that the requirement of patent application containing plurality so now the contentious matter was simple when i am filing a divisional be it suo moto or as per the controller's requirement is it necessary that my invention the plurality of inventions are claimed or it can be disclosed anywhere in the specification and the single judge of delhi high court mentioned that no disclosure is sufficient actually it is not necessary to uh, be claimed so that that matter need not be specifically claimed in the uh, 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 claims of the main invention that's what the single judge of the delhi high court uh, expressed the divisional bench the divisional bench so the matter went to the divisional bench and divisional bench emphasized that there is no justification for restriction restricting the filing of a divisional solely to situation where the multiple inventions are found in the claims means what specification may be agar multiple inventions and let me tell you honestly speak i've been practicing the patent uh, law since 5 6 years in india but then have uh, like you know generally dealt more with the us uh, patent law us patent law allows divisionals based on anything which is a disclosure available in the specification and now i believe as per this particular decision syngenta versus syngenta versus uh, the controller of patents in this particular it has been made very clear it may be not only based on the fer that you get it is just not be based on the fer that you get but also also upon upon the co moto case that is mai khud bhi agar file kar leta hu on my own if i file divisional it is allowed first and secondly secondly any specification disclosure is sufficient to file a divisional application this makes it very clear for the section 16 section 16 is about power of controller to uh, uh, like you know divide the invention next one uh, of course the most important section 3d of indian patent act has been discussed again and again about a new form of known substance which does not result in the enhancement of known efficacy efficacy has been uh, like you know uh, section 3d also provides some kind of i would say uh uh explanation to this as such which which includes various 
various uh, forms actually new form may be salt mostly related to chemistry salt ester ether polymorph metabolite pure form particle size isomer mixture of isomers complex combination derivatives and known subs of known substance they are considered the same substance unless they differ significantly in re properties with regard to efficacy. Efficacy was defined as therapeutic efficacy in this case of Novartis versus Union of India, which is about which is about the drug imatinib, just beta crystalline form uh, Novartis had claimed actually. The test of efficacy and the court had a specific comments actually. The, the test of efficacy is uh, depend upon the function, utility or the purpose of the product under consideration actually. The word, uh, the efficacy can only be therapeutic efficacy. What is the significance of this actually? Now, the significance of this is that aapka uh, when you have to, let us say there is a there is a one drug and it's a new form of known drug. That new form of known drug has to have enhanced therapeutic efficacy over the previous drug. Now, enhanced therapeutic efficacy prove karna is difficult because it has to be done through clinical studies as well at times. So this this was the case which was discussed in detail and iskiliya apko. Aapko, uh, it has been asked as well uh, for the, uh, I would say, the uh, 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 in the exam as well. This has been asked as such. So, uh, and the so this this is uh, another case. Uh, the conclusion herein was the uh, court, Supreme Court had upheld the Indian Patent Office rejection, the application which was uh, rejected as such. Uh, Balvinder ji, awaaz aa rahi hai, thoda sa, you can just check it uh, online or just check with your audio. Next case is compulsory licensing, jo again discuss hua hai. Uh, uh, you can go through some of the videos. It was discussed in the classes. It is, it is there. Uh, this has been asked in exam and I have told this section 84 there are two or three sections only in that entire chapter important 84 a care then you have the one which is for terms and conditions and 92 a which are the important sections compulsory licensing case may you had got a, a compulsory license granted for surafinib for a specific uh, uh, like you know period of time to NATCO. This was this is the only compulsory license which is given till date by the Indian Patent Office. Remember that the this these compulsory licensing proceedings happen at the Indian Patent Office as well. In case sare details we had discussed in detail uh, like you know about this particular case. A reasonable requirement of the public has been made Kya kya submissions the NATCO ke buyer ke and controller found merit in NATCO submission that the reasonable requirement was not met. Apne, one thing that you have to remember is that in case of a compulsory license, it is not necessary that all three criteria are satisfied. Any one of the criteria that reasonable requirement is not met, invention is not available to the public at a reasonably affordable price or the invention is not worked within the territory of India. You can get a compulsory license. But important, in this particular case, all the criteria were met by NATCO. Reasonably affordable price pay available nahi hai, not to work. The <coughs> most uh, contentious thing or which has been discussed again and again uh, uh, on uh, multiple uh, forums actually is that worked in the, within the territory of India actually. Means means it has to be manufactured. This is something which is quite tricky in terms of uh, compulsory licensing. The terms and conditions that were set for the compulsory license, the royalty for how long, the jurisdiction, the obligations, the type of license, all these things are, are discussed in detail and the chart is also there available as such. Uh, now this is as per this is as per the Indian Patent Act that particular terms and conditions uh, uh, section is there. Uh, I don't recollect the exact number, maybe eighty eight or eighty nine actually. 
based on that, the terms and conditions for the compulsory license was decided. Next case, important one, section 21 of Indian Patent Act, the Erickson versus Union of India. Here, before we move ahead, we have to remember about section 117A. 117A is an appellate jurisdiction of Delhi High Court Intellectual Property Rights Division, that is section 117A. What are the sections which are appealable? And this is the list given in 117A. It includes 15 to 20, specific powers of controller, 25 4, post grant opposition, section 28, mention of inventors as such in the patent. 51, direction to co-owners, patent of edition 54, 57, amendment, 60, 61, about restoration, 63, about surrender, 66, about revocation in, uh, of patent in public interest, registration of assignment, 69, uh, clerical error, section 68, and section 84, 85, 88, 91, 92, 94, related to compulsion. These are appealable under 117A. Okay. Uh, there was one question how to about the review reviews actually. So for review of a control, any of the controller's decision can be reviewed by his uh, the controller himself. And you can go for review petition under form 24 for that as well. But then this is appellate jurisdiction happening. So the section numbers are specific and here important. Here chart important here. What section numbers are appealable to the uh, Delhi High Court, which was IPAB earlier, right? Now, a interesting case hua tha. This was long back. Yaha pe uh, application was filed by Ericsson. Uh, the application got published. FER was given by the uh, patent office. FER was replied timely. FER reply ke baad. SER was issued. Now, what is SER? Subsequent examination report. SER is important. Uh, uh, aapko usko reply dena hai. Now, SER was also replied. That and that in the reply, it was that the, in the event the decision of uh, court, uh, the controller was going to be adverse, the opportunity should be given for hearing action. That was a request. On 10th October 2008, the controller said, last date for putting the application for grant has expired. The application has been deemed to be abandoned under the provisions of section 21. Now, the only question was why 21 and not 15? 15 is refusal. Section 15 is refusal. Agar was section 15 ke under refuse karta controller, the case was appealable. 21, if you look at this chart, there is no 21 ka appeal available to the IPAB answer. So that point of time, the matter went to I. Uh, so the the company wanted to take the matter to IPAB, but that didn't happen because the matter matter was not appealable un, uh, under section 117A. It didn't include sections uh, section 21 as such. So why did the controller put? Uh, it under section 21 and not under 15. That was the matter. A petition was filed and uh, a writ petition was filed as such. And uh, the 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 uh, controller, uh, so the, uh, the court uh, provided uh, uh, like, you know, a verdict that uh, it should have been refused under section 15 and uh, not under section 21. So the matter went ahead in this specific case. Later on, this was this case in the court was represented by uh, uh, one of the biggest law firms in India uh, for Ericsson. And that point of time, the controller then refused it under Section 15. Matter went to IPAB. The patent, IPAB overturned that decision and patent was granted later, actually. So this case provides you a lot of insights about three things. Section 21 or 15 ka differences. 117A, which is important. IPAB has been uh, not active now, but then you have the appellate jurisdiction of Delhi High Court, Intellectual Property Rights Division under Section 117A. What are those sections as? 
इससे आपको और एक चीज पता चलती है विच इज वेरी क्रूशियल फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पर द डिफरेंसेस बिटवीन वेरियस टर्म्स एक्चुअली एबेंड रिफ्यूजल विड्रॉन अपोज नाउ आई टेल यू पीपल गेट कंफ्यूज बिटवीन टू थिंग्स expedited examination and early publication always there is a confusion look at like you know even i have i dealt a case two days back where in the client was like yeah humne we have filed for expedited no you are not eligible for expedited examination early publication is something which is which is anyone can do expedited examination you need a uh, eligibility under if you are eligible then only you can go for एक्सपीरियटेड एग्जाम जो टर्म्स है ना उनका मीनिंग आपको एग्जाम परस्पेक्टिव से याद रखना है लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट केम्टूरा वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया केस बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग था लॉन्ग बैक इंडियन पेटेंट टू वन थ्री सिक्स जीरो वॉज ग्रांटेड टू केम्टूरा एंड देर वॉज एन इक्वेलेंट बट देन द प्लेटिव filed a patent infringement against uh, union of india for some reasons actually usne uh, patent infringe kiya hai karke defendant filed a revocation petition against the subject patent before ipap revocation petition mein it was alleged that the plaintiff had withheld the information by uspto and epo so section 8 ke under under section 81 it is your duty to to file the uh, prosecution details of other countries and honorable delhi court observed that due to prima facie uh, case of uh, non compliance of section 8 the ground for revocation is uh, attracted that is the patent can be revoked on section 8 requirement as such so this is very crucial and this case made it very clear that uh, the 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 companies or everyone has to take section 8 form 3 very seriously also i would like to mention again repeat this is section 8 1 and section 8 2 requirement section 8 1 is the one which is applicant's duty to submit the foreign filing details it has to be done in form 3 controller has the power to ask any information under under section 8 2 basically and that has to be submitted for example controller can ask how did you reply to the us office action that you have to put under form 30 and not form 3 Eight one is form three, and eight two requirement has to be uh, under form thirty only. So these are some of the these are I would say some of the case studies. Uh, as I'll repeat, uh, Bajaj Auto versus TVS Motors under section one zero six one zero eight, Syngenta versus Controller of Patents section sixteen, section three D Novartis versus Union of India, section eighty four Compulsory Licensing Surafine by Natco, section twenty one Ericsson versus Union of India one twenty one as well as one one seven, and section eight which is Kemtura versus Union of India. These six cases I believe are more than sufficient. there are n number of things available in the public domain what is important what is not important that can be discussed that can be uh, like you know i would say uh, there can there can be lot of uh, uh, permutation combinations or arguments based on that as well but then i also wanted to end up with few things ye bahut important hai uh, at times maybe i if i have to take a contra view or if i have to Uh, come up with some questions which are not from the patent act or recent updates say hai then in that case and specially important for the viva purpose the ministry of commerce released the draft rules 23 for amendment uh, comments from the relevant uh, stakeholder as as such as such uh, so this was in 23 again this is not applicable rules are not yet uh, they are not yet uh, like you know Uh, so they are in draft stage also there is no notification gazette notification for that as such janavishwas act 2023 related to uh, some of the sections for penalties which we discussed in the class yes janavishwas act is important 
Madras High Court inaugurated the IP division and notified the intellectual property division rules 2022 is something important. Again, CGPTDM open house sessions to address grievances on IP issues Monday or Wednesday on patents actually. They have the grievances or uh, like, you know, the open house is there by the CGPTDM PTTM actually every, uh, every Monday or Wednesday. Uh, they also, the CG PDTM also uh, asked for uh, comments on IP manuals, including the manual of patent practice this year. The DBT, Department of Biotechnology under Ministry of Science and Technology issued the DBT IP guidelines. The parliament passed the Biological Diversity Amendment Act 2023 on 27 September. The act includes proposal to decriminalize the offenses under uh, codifying users of codified uh, traditional knowledge and Irish practitioners from sharing benefit with the local communities. And finally, last week or a couple of weeks back, we had a notification of examiner's post at the intellect IP office uh, that has come up. Uh, this is a re-notification as such. And these are some of the updates that have happened in this one year. Ending my session with the last recommended video must for each one of you go through this particular link time management and answers to situational questions it will be too important for you it would help you for strategizing your paper too in in i would say the uh, exam as such in term because paper two uh, if you start preparing now it's almost over for you for paper two, actually, because paper two is more about conceptual understanding, more about practice. But paper two is also about time management because I had some of the best of my students who couldn't score really very high because they couldn't manage the time, although they were technically super smart, I would say. And on the other, other side, I would say, uh, like, you know, if you can manage it properly, you can maybe not score really high, but then can get, make sure that you're qualifying for the YVIAS. That's what the end goal is for paper one and paper two. You should be qualifying for the VIVA with some really good score of 70 to 80 in paper one and 50 to 60 let's say in paper two. Scoring in paper two is difficult actually. Like, you know, of course, in few cases, students have got really good marks, but then again, in, I, if I put it as a trend, if it is general, then that point of time it is, very difficult to get good marks in paper too. I have got a question here in from Dhananjay. If possible, please explain PCT convention national phase with respect to timeline priority date of for resident of India. Dhananjay, the priority date is the first filing. PCT and convention is filed within one year. And you have 18 months from priority when your application gets published and national fees application at the end of 30 or 31 months. PCT application is considered as an international fees application as such. The national, so you have, PCT is a three-tier system. Priority, many a times this is not there. You can file PCT directly. Priority application in India, it can be complete or provisional. Within one year, you have a PCT and third is national fees application. Remember, these timelines have nothing to do with the term of a patent. Term of a patent is calculated separately. The, the In India, uh, the term of patent is calculated differently. PCT filing ka, PCT filing se hota hai. And jo convention filing ka hai, wo convention filing date se aapka, uh, like, you know, you would have that uh, uh, term of a patent. So I'm open for the questions class. You can put, put the questions in the chat box, YouTube chat box. I'm also uh, uh, wishing you a very happy new year on the very last day of 2023. We are catching up for the live session, last live session, wishing you a very happy new year as well as wishing you, a, I would say, a, a great success in the patent agent exam that is scheduled in a, a week's time as such. Uh, I am uh, hopeful that, uh, uh, like, you know, you are right there on track in terms of your preparation uh, keep aside uh, other things that are not that significant for next six, seven days, because this would, this would be an opportunity. Why I'm saying this would be an opportunity? Because if we have the rules of uh, 2023 applied, 
for the next speech intelligence exam probably design act would be part of the syllabus and when you have two separate acts it becomes uh, 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 like you know it becomes really difficult uh, to remember section number because abhi bhi what i am recommending is uh, section numbers and rule numbers dono mat karo koi ek karo so there are only three rules which are important 24c there is one i think 116 which is for disqualification of peach and teaching there is one for the petition ye teen rule numbers hai baki sections yaad karo to design act next time aayega this is the opportunity for you this is the time for you it's still i don't think uh, too late the syllabus is not that big uh, like you know you can just quickly revise everything we have been revising we revised three or four sessions yesterday we'll be revising four sessions today uh, as well uh, like you know and uh, i i hope that this this is also uh, a useful session mitali go through the pharma literacy youtube channel go through the pharma literacy youtube channel and uh, like you know you can just just go to the live sessions go to the live sessions as such and there is one session which is for uh, time management uh, time management let me see if i can uh, if i can put the link right here in the chat box okay i i just got it uh what i'll do is i'll just put that link in the uh, live live chat actually so that all of you can uh, get uh, uh, i would say uh, benefited by that particular uh, uh right here chat box okay, I, i just got it okay i've just put it there you can go through that link uh, mitali uh what do you suggest sir in paper to go for part c first and then a and b or to go in order and balvinder ji i think i've been discussing this with my class as well as uh with uh, my students as well that go in a reverse sequence go in a reverse sequence because if you lose out on any one question it would be for just 5 or 10 marks rather than 30 or 20 marks So thirty, twenty, ten, five is the sequence that I am saying. But then again, depending on your comfort, you can choose that. Those students who selected thirty, twenty, ten, five sequence, where well, they got benefited because time management was comparatively easier for them as such. So that's how I would actually put it. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you so much for joining in on this Sunday. It is, it was really nice to. interact with all of you and i would look forward to see you very soon uh, in the in the uh, next upcoming year uh, as such and once again uh, happy new year to all thank you